Good afternoon. My name is Mick McCohan and I am an outreach officer with the Galway One World Centre, which is based on the Bridge Mills, just down in the centre of Galway there. And I have bad news and good news this afternoon to impart on the issue of volunteering. Uh, uh, the, the good news is that volunteering overseas is obviously a wonderful opportunity and it's something I, I spent 20 years working in Latin America and feel very privileged and very lucky to have had the opportunity to get to know an, another part of the world, to speak another language, to meet other people and the, the kind of emotional and psychological challenges and growth that go with that. However, the Galway One World Centre has a, would have a critical approach to the idea of simply throwing young people at another country perhaps without sufficient training. And just to illustrate that, um, that sounds like a train coming up the tracks, it could be my train. Um, two examples, just from the, we're, we're in the middle of the, the Haitian crisis at the moment, it's nine days on and the country has literally been flattened. An already weak government and infrastructure has been obliterated, so that's the scenario Haiti faces. The first two, interestingly, signs of life uh, in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake came from an Irish volunteer and the Cuban embassy in Port-au-Prince. In the case of the Irish volunteer, Louise Ivers, she works with a group called Partners in Health. She's a highly trained Harvard medical person who immediately got to work on hundreds of people outside the building she was in at the time in terms of making immediate uh, uh, health-related uh, uh, aid. And uh, she works, the organization she works with has 400 people in Haiti, of which 98% are Haitians. And that, in terms of balance, seems like the least an organization needs to ensure sustainability and that local people are being trained rather than simply people who come from privileged, se privileged centers of the world, uh, such as Dublin, London, New York, wherever. Across the city at the Cuban embassy, as soon as the earthquake happened, uh, medical embassy staff came outside and set up an improvised field hospital. This sounds absolutely remarkable when you think that most trained diplomats have not probably taken on the career of a doctor as well. However, uh, the, Cubans, uh, uh, the Cubans developed uh, an idea around volunteering abroad which went by what sounds like a very outdated principle now called international proletarianism. And, and while that sounds like a remnant of, of the Soviet era, it was thought about by Che Guevara, who uh, was, was an important factor in, in the Cuban Revolution and also a doctor. And he believed that active citizens, and we, we often talk about the term active citizenship, means when people travel overseas, they perform functions that are important, critical, and also that skills are passed on. And it would be hard to, to walk along a street in Havana, Cuba, without meeting a doctor at least every two paces. There's a doctor in every street corner. So that immediately this happened, you had trained medical staff able to come out of the embassy and begin work. These are two different approaches, if you like, to volunteering overseas. You had the highly trained, Harvard-educated medical specialist, and then the grassroots idea that everybody is a volunteer, that in the circumstances you live in, whether you're in Ireland or whether you're in Haiti or whether in New York, there are urgencies surrounding you. And it's not simply a matter of finding a charitable place which desperately needs our help. So I suppose they would be the caveats and the cautions we bring in to the ideas of volunteering. In that context, the One World Centre offers information, pre-departure information. We do not uh, place people. That, there are hundreds of organisations and some very interesting booklets around which go through the A to Z of organisations which will place you overseas. We ask, and again, you, you, you'll see the, the One World Centre website, which has a lot of information. But if I had a chance, the backdrop behind me would be a massive question mark. In other words, we ask about the nature of volunteering. Rather than simply say, if you pay this money and you are willing to do this, then you can go, we would actually stop and say, hang on a second, let's think, let, let's think a bit deeper about the nature of volunteering, the nature of power involved in, in the idea of people who are uh, usually white, usually privileged, uh, traveling to other countries, uh, which for many reasons are on their knees. And we know with Haiti as an example, for example, that the French and the US, two of the key countries in delivering emergency and much needed aid, uh, were responsible for the looting and destruction of the country, the systematic uh, uh, extraction of Haiti's assets. 
whether it was sugar, spices, or wood. And uh, to the point where the French extracted reparations because of an uprising by Haitian slaves, which lasted into the 1950s. Uh, this sounds like a long way around uh, explaining what the Galway One Welsh Centre does, but I think it, it's an opportunity, unlike some of the other organisations which obviously want to get across uh, the immediate steps to going, we are the steps before you go. And we offer a number of different courses. For example, at the moment, we have a course called Education for Liberation, otherwise known as Night Classes with Attitude. And what that is, is an attempt to stimulate and share ideas about all the things I've been talking about, the nature of power, the nature of our place in the world, uh, racism, awareness, the fact that when we walk, step out of our zone uh, and our kind of comfort zone, if you like, the f you know, we grow up in Ireland, which is a certain, we have a certain way of looking at things, our peers, our education, the religious traditions we come from, all inform us and give us a certain character. And that immediately meets another character overseas. And it's simply being aware of that, that it's not just simply meeting the needs of ourselves as we go overseas, it's also meeting the needs of the host community, the host families, and the host country. What, what constitutes sustainable aid for those countries? And as volunteers, can we contribute to making that happen? Or are we in some way, perhaps, uh, slowing that down by placing ourselves I in certain situations? It's a question, and it's a question that needs to be teased out in discussion. And at the Galway One World Centre, that's really what we're there for. We really want to see that happen. And we have a number of staff. Uh, we're available. You could certainly drop in between the hours of 10 and 3 and hopefully find someone there between Tuesday and Friday. Um, or give us a call 091 530 590. It's also on the website. And uh, arrange to meet one of us. We organise workshops for volunteers uh, who are travelling overseas so that when you, when you come and meet us, you're not going to be simply met with a lecture and made to feel bad about the fact that you're going overseas. We're simply going to raise the issues and perhaps challenge each other to, to look at our different perspectives, the way we see the world, the way we see other countries, and uh, learn a bit more. So everyone is welcome to sh have their own bit of the One World Centre. Thank you.